The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. In a previous episode, we showed you how to get started using FPGAs. And for an example, we hooked an FPGA up to this monitor and created a VGA signal with big fat pixels. And Ben's friend, Parker Dillman, gave us this great Game Boy code, so we had the idea to use this monitor and scale it up to make a giant Game Boy. So that's what we're gonna do in today's episode. Hook a Game Boy up to an FPGA and then use that to make a giant Game Boy screen off a real Game Boy, and then build a giant Game Boy around it, scale to the screen with giant workable buttons and everything. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. How can we make this portable? Inspired designs. I am the internet troll. Regrettable acting. Bad damn hatches! Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Ben is routing out the front panel of the giant Game Boy with half inch Sintra. After it was cut, Karen and I sanded and trimmed the edges of the piece while Ben prepared more to be routed. Karen used a hand router to round the edges. Ben then cut 12 pieces of half inch Sintra for the corners. We cleaned them up and screwed them together. This gives the build nice rounded corners. We wanted to keep the Game Boy as light as possible. Ben cut the sides, top and bottom with quarter inch Sintra. We glued foam insulation to the inside for rigidity. To save money, I cut the skin out of the six millimeter Sintra and we will line the inside of it with paneling foam like you'd find at the home store. So the idea is these should fit in here Granted, we don't have the foam because these corner pieces take the foam into account. This is the top piece and there's a little gap here where the original Game Boy is gonna stick. So the cartridge will still go in the back of the unit, even though that's actually kind of not handy. I'm just gonna use my super glue gun to put this together. That's why I bought it. It can do anything. I'm gonna get these corner pieces in place and then I will, uh, then I will glue the main channel. I need to figure out where the controller hooks up. I think it's gonna be right here. I found a schematic for the Game Boy. It looks like there's kind of a small matrix for this. I don't know why. Uh, there's six pins that go directly to the CPU, so I have to map those CPU pins to this connector so I know how to wire up the controller. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six is 64, which is P13. Okay, so I've gotta map out everything that I need on this header. Then I'm gonna make a new header that I can connect to my FPGA and my controller. So I just gotta go through and map all six of these. Should be a little trickier because now I have to touch these pins on one side and then touch them on the other. Lame. So we have two grounds, our image data, and our controllers. So that should be everything we need to hook up the Game Boy. Don't need this anymore. Well, I hope we don't. Now I'm gonna remove this connector and attach my own. So I'm gonna hook up this ground on the VGA cable, although it's pretty crappy. As long as it sticks, I'm happy with it, I guess. Then I'm gonna hook up a four bit resistor ladder to this FPJ adapter. What that'll do is it'll take the digital signals coming from the FPJ and put it through four different values of resistor and that will turn it into an analog value that we can put into the green channel of the VGA cable. And then blue and red, I may not even hook up. Green only. So the FPJ will go here. I've already tested these pins so I know they'll work. I'm just gonna hook up the pins that are the most convenient because I can just change it later in the FPGA. 
So we'll go 220, 471 K, 2K, and that will be our resistor ladder for green. I may hook up red and blue, but only with like a two bit resistor ladder. Cause really it's a Game Boy. It doesn't need all those fancy colors. Game Boy gross green. I've hooked up the level shifters. This will take the five volt TTL levels from the Game Boy and knock it down to what the FPGA uses because we can't just stick five volts into the FPGA. However, I do need to find the reference voltage on the FPGA side. So I'm using the default uh, 2.5 volt level. So see how there's three regulators here? I have to find the one that is 2.5 volts. Uh, 3.3, there it is. Okay, so that's the one powering the 2.5 volt rail inside of the FPJ, and that's the one I need for reference. I'm gonna wire that up, and then I'll see if the signals appear here. I'll check them on the scope to see if they're the right voltage level before I hook them up to the FPGA. All right, power up the FPGA. Pew. Still run enough battery power the Game Boy, but in the final unit, we'll probably put an AC adapter of some kind into it. All right, let's see if we get any signals. I would hope the Game Boy would run without that front thing attached. Okay, so, okay, that's at five volts. All right, let's look at the signals over here, see if they're different. All right, yeah, it's at 2.5 volts. Good. And he's still alive, sort of. Cool. Time to test it with the VGA screen. Okay, I hooked the Game Boy up to the FPGA to the level shifters and we're definitely getting a picture. I noticed it's very susceptible to noise. Look, look at this. That's a pretty cool effect, but it's not what we want. So I'm gonna have to go in and make sure this cable is as short as possible and also shielded, but it looks like it works. So this is my control panel board. I'm just kind of hooking it up manually. I'm going to have these support feet here. And then we're gonna use these 3D printed snap action switch holders to sit under the buttons. And the idea is there'll be a piece of foam the same height. So the buttons won't just push these switches up upon their own weight. You actually have to push them to push down the foam and to push the button. So I'm just gonna manually position these and then attach these feet so we can make sure this will fit inside the case before we paint the main case. So here I go. Again, on my own. Now it's time to wire up the controller to the Game Boy. I've attached this ribbon cable to the spots on the old ribbon cable where the controls were, and I've connected it to this disconnect. I have a schematic here, which tells us that there's kind of a multiplexer going on to drive the switches. So I will attach this little header here to the back of the switchboard, and then add these diodes according to the schematic, and hopefully it'll work. So there's P11, P12, P13, and P10. Those are probably the drivers. They would send, I would assume, a one to both switches. If the switch is pressed, it will go through the diode and end up at P14. So you would activate these in sequence and then see which one of these is active and that would tell you which button has been pressed. Seems like a shift register would have been easier. Of course, that would have required an extra component and got to cost it out. Good thing I have both buttons memorized because Nintendo, Nintendo never changes. Oh no, our, our Amiibo, it's not an artificial shortage. We're really having that hard of a time building glorified Happy Meal toys. I don't know how many times in a row they have to have artificial shortages before people are like, hey, maybe Nintendo creates artificial shortages. Oh my God, I can't get an Amiibo. I want to pay anything. I'll pay anything, eBay scalper. I must have Wii Fitness Trainer. I know we will save the company by selling plastic crap to kids and adults. 
I got an image of a Game Boy online and I turned it into a vector version. Kind of looks like this. I'm making sure all the lines are straight that we can actually machine it. And then I scaled it up to fit the display on the LCD, which is represented by this square here. So that was a constant and I scaled the Game Boy until it fit. And I wanted to have a little bit of a gap because on a Game Boy, the image doesn't go all the way up to the uh, edge of the green on the screen. So the main parts are this piece of plastic, which I am gonna have inset in the Game Boy, just like a real Game Boy. Uh, we're gonna use these corner pieces to make curved walls right here. Down here, we'll have a uh, speaker, because I have a couple speakers laying around. So we'll put a big speaker down by the speaker hole. Everything will be to proper scale, the buttons and everything. Uh, we use vinyl to make the text. Uh, this represents the frame that's gonna hold the LCD. I'll actually put a big red light here for the battery. And what I'm working on right now are the controls. I'm gonna cut them apart so they will be in three layers. And then I will glue them together and then we'll put them inside here. This is a side view representing where the controls are gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna use snap action switches, but even then I think the controls might be heavy enough. The buttons might be heavy enough to actually press the switches without you pushing it. So I'm gonna put foam under everything. So the foam will keep the buttons nice and tight. And then only when you depress it, will it push the switch, hopefully. So yeah, we're gonna cut the pieces for the case, then assemble the case, and then after we do that, we'll start putting in the screen and the buttons. Once we know that all fits, then we'll paint the case and then do final assembly. While Ben's working on button design, I'm working on the decals. So uh, rather than making a mask and painting them on, we decided that since I've got access to a vinyl cutter, that it would be way easier to just make stickers and apply them. So with a vinyl cutter, you essentially have a solid sheet of vinyl and it uses a tiny knife uh, that is computer controlled and cuts out the designs. And then you have to do a process called weeding where you remove all of the vinyl that you do not want. And then you have the desired vinyl left over. Once that's done, you take transfer tape, uh, apply it to the back, and then you can peel that and it'll pull the vinyl off and you can apply it to your surface. So I'm gonna do a bunch of very fine measuring and make sure that we get these on in the right place. While Ms. Corbeil is working on vinyl application, I concentrated on mounting the screen to the front panel. I had to adjust it until it looked right. Then I made some marks and attached it. This amplifier has been laying around for years. We're finally gonna use it. So we'll mount it into the side of the case sideways like this. Then we'll put a big thumb wheel here. It'll be a scale version of the volume knob on the actual Game Boy. And then we'll plug it into the Game Boy using the headphone jack. As part of the final assembly, Ben applied a few coats of paint. We mounted all the components inside and secured the back panel. We finish up by adding some custom Game Boy decals. Well, we finished the giant Game Boy, AKA Project Game Man, and I was gonna get Karen's input on it, but she's too busy playing it now that she found that we have a Zelda game. So it turned out pretty well. Uh, we made it at 670% the size of a normal Game Boy. It's approximately two foot by three foot. Karen just fell into a hole. It is a nice puke green display, just like always. We have a battery light, which means nothing because it's powered off of the uh, <laughs> outlet. Uh, yeah, but it turned out pretty well. I like how the screen is um, really easy to see. The old Game Boy didn't have a transistor on every pixel. That's why old screens were blurry. So it's actually nice to play this on a crisp display. See if adventuring ever goes bad, Link can just get a job as a pruner.
Yeah! Ah! You'd be like Edward Sword Hands. Nice. Ooh, but you can do some of that tree. Oh, it looks just like a tree to me. A lot of times when it's surrounded by things, that it's a clue, meaning you can do something to it. Will you do anything? Do I have any other weapons, like a hook shot or? You've got bombs and, I don't know how you use them. Oh, oh, I see what you can do. Oh, the feather must indicate jump. Okay, oh yeah, see you're signing what button does what ah. here. So I can put bombs on, there we go. Okay, are you sure you want to put bombs on B? Die! What were you saying about bombs? That it was the best <laughs> idea ever? <laughs> You're close! Ah! So Ben, giant Game Boy! We did it, we built this in like what, four days? Yeah, about. Pretty, pretty fast. So yeah, we took a real Game Boy, we attached an FPGA to its dot matrix display, so it's actual hardware, just with a better screen, basically. Made the controls big, used big snap action switches. Uh, finally used up this extra speaker I had laying around. It's always good when we can use up materials. Uh, yeah, it turned out really well. I, I especially like the serendipity of, yeah, yeah the, that's a pinball 12 volt flasher, and it fit perfectly in the scaled up battery indicator light hole. Yeah. So obviously it was meant to be. Okay, so what improvements would you make if you had more time? Uh, well, this is sticking out a little bit too far, but if it went in further, it would hit the screen. Mm -hmm. Maybe program the screen to have just bright green in all the dead areas instead yeah. of black, because that'd be more realistic to an old Game Boy. Mm -hmm. um, these, had, we had, these gaps are a little bit too tolerant. We should have made these a little tighter. Yeah. We could always shore it up with pieces of foam. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's playable as is. Yeah, other than that, I feel it went pretty well. I mean, there's a few details that are missing, like right here, it, says, it should say power, mm. but pff, no one's gonna no one's gonna notice that until I point it out. Yeah, no one would have noticed that. Well, Karen, we finally did it. We took a portable game system and turned it into a consoleized version, just like everyone has always asked us to do a million times over. They'll be so pleased. I hope so. Have you ever taken a tiny gadget and supersized it? Look for me online as the heck with Karen to let me know, especially on element14.com forward slash TBHS. Where you can also read about our other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll see you next time. And don't forget to subscribe. Oh, is that where you take a picture of your W-2? Wow, I wish my taxes were that easy. <laughs> Have you ever taken a game and supersized it? Look for me on, I, yeah, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Super. It's like a pin bump. <laughs> Remember when Game Boys were small? That was lame. Hello, hello, I'm Adele. Now will we be able to fit all the electronics in it? The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com.